Hello everybody, this is JJ. Welcome back to the ASUS ROG YouTube channel. Today we're actually going to be doing a little bit of an unboxing as well as a feature breakdown on the brand new ASUS GTX 560 DirectCU2 top. So um, this is not to be confused with the previously released GTX 560 Ti part, which was a fantastic part in its own right, but it was a little bit higher up in terms of the actual segmentation and the price banding. This new part is going to be really hitting the gamer sweet spot at about $200 in terms of the MSRP and a little bit more for overclock SKUs, uh, such as our top model that we're going to be taking a look at. So the focus of what we're going to be doing today is taking a look at uh, the GTX 560 DirectCU top. So you can see here we actually have it running on our test bed very quiet even while it's actually running full 3D load which it's uh, showcasing the DirectCU2 design. But um, we're going to be doing a little bit of unboxing, we're going to take a look at some of the actual features and technologies that we implement on the card, give you a little bit of breakdown on some of the functionality uh, in terms of the features and, and what they bring to you. So in terms of where this card is sitting, uh, this is a card that's really positioned at hitting that sweet spot in terms of a gamer that's looking to upgrade from a previous generation part like an 8800 GT, um, 8600 GT or 9800 series GPU. This is really for somebody that's uh, looking at 22 inch, 24 inch panels, looking to run 1080p resolution, so 1920 by 1080, 1900 by 1200 resolutions, uh, and be able to maintain all that high level of fidelity and, and graphics uh, image quality settings that you want to have to really have the game look like it looks like on the box and all those screenshots. So these are the type of features like tessellation, ambient occlusion, anti-aliasing, depth of field, HDR, all these really cool things that really make the game that much more immersive and, and that much more entertaining when you're sitting back and you're playing back. So this card's going to really be able to, to give you that level of performance and be able to maintain a high level of frame rate. And, and in addition to that, it's also going to have the opportunity and the ability to be able to go into an SLI configuration to be able to uh, enable higher levels of resolutions, higher level of fidelity, and, and even things like 3D vision surround. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the box here itself and see some of the immediate things that we're trying to showcase. So we've got, of course, uh, the GTX DirectCU2 top. Uh, DirectCU2 is, of course, our non-reference fan and heatsink assembly design that we have on the card. Um, in addition to that, of course, we have our Super Alloy Power. This is a special in-house developed uh, metallurgic uh, compound and process which allows us to increase the overall quality, reliability, and performance of the onboard VRM components. In addition to that, uh, of course, we've got some key variables in terms of a 925 megahertz core clock speed, which is overclocked from the reference, one gigabyte of GDR5, which is also overclocked to uh, 4200 megahertz, and of course, uh, the card itself supports such NVIDIA technologies as uh, physics, SLI, and 3D vision. And uh, of course, we've got to the L DirectX 11 done right, where we've got full support for tessellation and other features that are part of that uh, API and SDK. Uh, so let's go ahead and t take a look actually at the card and, and see what you got going on here. So before we jump into the car, let's first and foremost just take a look at some of our basic accessories here. So we've got our Molex to PCIe in case you're running a legacy uh, power supply. You've got uh, your DVI to VGA connector. And then you've got your mini HDMI to, to full HDMI connector. addition to that, let's see what we also have here. Okay, we've got here our speed setup guide. So this of course gives you pretty much a quick breakdown as far as you know how to install the card, what the ports and connections look like, and, and all that specific type of information for uh, first time doers. In addition to that, of course, we've got uh, the VGA driver and manual. This includes our smart doctor utility, which gives you the ability to create a custom fan gradients as well as go ahead and actually overclock the graphics card and as well as just the, the the voltage for secure overclocking. Don't forget to always check out GeForce.com for the latest NVIDIA detonator drivers to get the best performance. Okay, and now here, got the star of the show. We've got our GTX 560 DirectCU 2 top. So just awesome, aggressive looking card, very clean, very nice. You can see here, of course, we've got one of the hallmarks of the card, which is uh, the two fans which denote our DirectCU2 design, which give you double the airflow as opposed to the normal reference design. 
But uh, before we go ahead and jump into the cart, let's go ahead and just take on a little kind of visual tour here. So first and foremost, go ahead and do a comparison here to a GTX 580 in terms of the card's profile. One of the really nice things about the previous generation card that this is replacing the GTX 460 is that it was a small form factor, compact, you know, had a great acoustic profile as you can definitely hear here. It's essentially silent while it's running under 3D load um, and still maintained a high level of performance. So this card definitely maintains all those traits in terms of having you know, small size, high level performance, and very quiet. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look here at the rest of the connectivity options. So of course here we have our our venting uh, to go ahead and allow for the hot air that's coming off from the actual heat sink and fan assembly to be exhausted outside the chassis. You've got our dual DVI here present, a dual link DVI supported for high resolution 30 inch panels. We've got our mini HDMI here, no pass through required so this will go ahead and output uh, not only 3D support but as well as audio and uh, high resolution as well. Got here the card itself, we've got the SLI connector, two way SLI being supported on the card. We've got your your PCIe connectors for your power supply. Back of the card. You can see here a little bit the, the VRM heatsink. Nice touch. Of course your standard by 16 Gen 2 PCIe connection as well. So that kind of gives you a little bit of the outside, the external aesthetic of the card's design. But what we're really interested in is taking a look at some of the more advanced features that you don't normally see normally get the chance to take a look at uh, when, you, when you see some of these unboxings or breakdowns. So we've already discussed uh, the DirectC2 initial fan design which we talked about here, but let's go ahead and jump into it a little bit deeper. So one really cool thing about ASUS cards is uh, the practicality in terms of how they're designed. So you can see right here, we've got just uh, four screws. Oops. <coughs> Very easy. Easy in terms of unscrewing this guy. So once you go ahead and remove those four, you're going to have full access to the actual bare card. So we've gone ahead and removed it here. So right there, you can go ahead and see the actual direct CU heatsink. So CU actually denoting, of course, that it's a copper material used to interface with the actual GPU die package. This is a very, very effective and efficient means to dissipate heat. It's the same type of technology that's used in really high performance CPU coolers. So um, we can see here we've got uh, three copper plates in terms that are making direct contact, allowing us to dissipate the heat from the GPU. And that goes ahead and has here a large a block assembly that's going to go ahead and dissipate heat, but as well it's going to go ahead and transfer it to this secondary radiator kind of design here where we have a lot of finning that allows us to go ahead and direct that airflow and exhaust the heat out and ultimately have a real nice effective design where we've won up the reference design in terms of being able to provide superior idle and low temperature and while being able to maintain very 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 low nose profile to the card. Now, Moving over here, we've got the actual card itself, and uh, this is a really nice looking card. I mean, first and foremost, you'll see that we're using this real nice, high quality, matte finish PCB. It's this dark, clean black, uh, same actually type of design that we used on our current Rampage D Black Edition board, where it looks really nice. But there's a lot of, um, you know, special things that ASUS does in terms of providing you with a higher level of card when we're talking about the actual onboard componentry. And that's what we're talking about when we, when we note the super alloy power. And super alloy power was a process that we've been working on for quite some time, which is about uh, especially designing through a special metallurgic process and compounds of materials to give us higher performing components. Um, and these ultimately allow for longer reliability, uh, cooler operation, and as well as a higher threshold in terms of the amount of voltage that these devices will not only output but also support. So such examples of this is that we have our uh, super alloyed capacitors. So the super alloyed capacitors actually offer double the lifespan of a normal capacitor due to their higher thresholds in terms of what they're offered and that's actually rated at a very high 75 C. So it's, a, it's quite impressive. We've got our um, real high grade VRM which is above the normal reference design and we've got our super alloy chokes which are also quite impressive in terms of the amount of amperage that they're going to support powering, uh, especially when overclocking, that's going to be a nice touch. 
we've got uh, the VRM, which has its own dedicated VRM heat sink, which is going to also help to minimize the heat and ensure better reliability and overclocking potential. We've got uh, our fuse protection built onto the board, which is to help minimize any type of uh, OVP or OCP issues that might come from like uh, spikes or surges or brownouts, things along those lines, which can sometimes cause the card to fail. Um, so that's a, it's a nice protection mechanism that we have on there as well. Other kind of small details that sometimes people don't realize uh, that go into the card's design are subtle touches such as these little items that you see here surrounding the actual GPU. This is a technology that we've had on our cards for a while that's called GPU Guard. And this is a special GPU bonding process between the die and the PCB that gives more rigidity, more rigidity and more structural integrity to the actual card. And this is important that when you take a higher performance uh, heat sink like this or larger design, it's actually going to put more stress on the GPU die and on the package. And this can actually cause cracking over time. It can cause wear and stress where you can get uh, image quality issues, stability issues, or, or sometimes even just outright failure of the card. So this is kind of like a plus one that we take it upon ourselves to improve the overall long-term reliability of the product. And it's also something that occurs even sometimes without adding in a, a more complex or large heat sink. Um, as the card is getting utilized and as you overclock it or you run it and you put it under load, it goes through a um, expansion and contraction process by getting hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold, and the traces actually um, will shrink and uh, expand, shrink and expand, and that can also cause issues. So this type of design along with you know our, our braced mechanism here, these all go to help reinforce the overall stability and the reliability of the product. So really stand out, you know, other all small touches as well as we of course have our uh, covered DVI ports which help minimize any type of interference or radiation helping to improve image quality. We take a look here at the back of the card. We've also got some other nice touches here where we have our what's called SAP, so our super alloy power caps, which you can see right here. And we have it actually also directly, directly placed behind the GPU die, which is very important when you talk about something being correctly designed because this is going to have a very high level of capacitance. It's going to act like a reservoir to be able to store uh, the, the current and, uh, that's needed that once you start to really hit it under load when you overclock it at higher frequencies you need to be able to instantaneously provide a high level of power to that to be able to maintain a, a more stable overclock as well as to also minimize a noise that occurs at those higher frequencies so this is a, a design that we've actually innovated for quite some time and uh, we're very happy to be able to maintain and have on, on a mid-range part like this you got uh, lastly a couple of other small you know touches such as uh, you got LEDs that we place here on the back the PCIe connectors that, you know, if you go ahead and you forget to actually connect one of the connectors or maybe it's not fully seated, actually will light up and let you know that you don't have that fully seated. So a lot of extra things here that you don't necessarily realize go into our non-reference non product that help to set ourselves apart from the competitors out there on the market. So that gives you a little bit more of a kind of breakdown in terms of the functions and features. Uh, that are present on the DirectCU2 part and you know it's something that uh, we're really happy about and as you can see right here it's performing quite well we're running full uh, 1920 by 1080 with anti-aliasing and AA all the effects max and turned on you can see that this system is essentially inaudible so of course we're running a lot of great parts as well to be able to keep that noise profile down as well but the card itself which would generally be producing uh, the most noise essentially inaudible at this point and this is on an open test bed so quite impressive so I definitely think you guys are going to be interested in taking a look at this part stay tuned uh, to the ASUS ROG YouTube channel we're going to have more videos more breakdowns in terms of temperature performance how to overclock the card and uh, anything else you guys are interested in, so definitely let us know uh, for you guys that are interested in terms of what we got running here we've got our Demos Tech ROG Edition test bed station we've got our Maximus 4 Extreme running a 2600K You've got a fantastic Corsair A70 uh, heat pipe based CPU cooler cooling us down. We've got 8 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 1600C8. Uh, we've got our ASUS uh, BD drive here. We've got uh, powering the entire system. We have a very efficient and very quiet Corsair AX 850 watt 90 plus gold certified PSU. And uh, that rounds out our test system here. So. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave us some comments on the YouTube page or hit us up on uh, asusrog.com forward slash forums.